hearts to the Lord. Yeah. 
saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They will come and they will be drawn in by the Holy Spirit because your word says you will draw all men to yourself. Father, well, there's nothing we can do but present the gospel. It's up to you to bring them in. So, Father, every point of the compass right now, we say, be gone, you liar. We say, be gone, you liar. Every principality and power who's trying to keep mankind down from coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we release 40 angels with drawn swords to defeat the enemy. And we know what's happening, Lord. We can feel it. We can sense it. We know that the enemy is up in arms because he knows his time is short. He has been defeated. We cannot walk in defeat. We need to walk in the promises that are given to us by Jesus. So Father, we thank you this morning as we enter into a time of worship. I pray God that we hold nothing back. We hold nothing back. Because we know that one day we'll be standing around the throne and we'll be worshiping you, the Father of all fathers, the Lord of all lords, by the power and the anointing of Holy Spirit. So today, Lord, as we enter into a time of worship, I say this word, freedom. Freedom. Freedom to do all that you've called us to do. Freedom to worship you with every fiber of our being. Freedom to walk in, the, in the, the freedom that we can enjoy your presence no matter what is coming against us. Because greater is you who's in us than him who's in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. the Father, not my will be done, but yours. Can you hear me as you kneel at the foot of the cross? Can you hear me say stuff like, I love you so much that I gave my life for you? Can you hear me? How close are you to the cross? Have you forgotten what he done for you on the cross? Have you forgotten when he spoke the words to one of the thieves hanging there and he said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. We can leave this place today and be with him in paradise. Amen? We can be with him in our rooms at night and wake up in paradise in his presence. One of the lyrics on that song was to be with you. Isn't that our desire to be with him? Sometimes we get discouraged because we don't know if he's listening or not, or if he's around us or not, or if he's with us or not. Sometimes we get discouraged because we can't feel his presence because of what we're going through. God's always there. Always there. Always there. Sometimes we don't hear his voice, or we think we don't hear his voice, but he's always there. Amen? Yes. Don't have a clue where we're going. John chapter 6, let's go there.
sure we even know what thank you means anymore because the world's idea of thank you is different. When we say thank you for what's been done for us by people in the world or people that we know, we say thank you. But I don't believe that thank you is enough to express how much we thank you. Express how much we thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son, Jesus. More than that, Jesus left divinity to walk on an earth that was wounded and dying from sin. And he bore the sins of the entire world on him. The time of his death, he was so full of the sin resting on his shoulders that his father couldn't even look at him. And Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Then he says these words before he God. It is finished. Father, we thank you that it is finished. We thank you that Jesus is no longer on the cross, no longer in the grave, but he has ascended and he seats at the right hand of you, Father. So this morning, as we get into your word, Lord, I pray by the power and the revelation of Holy Spirit to bring something into our hearts that will cause us to walk in joy and peace and comfort knowing that you are with us and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. John chapter 6, I think I'm going to start with verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, seek me. Seek me. Seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled, do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Jesus is approved, isn't he? Jesus has the stamp of approval. You have that same stamp of approval because of what Jesus did for you. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do so that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. You believe in him whom he has sent. Believe in Jesus whom God has sent for one purpose and one purpose only, to bring you into relationship with Almighty God. Through the once and eternal sacrifice of the Lamb. So they said to him, What then do you do for a sign so that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Isn't that something? People are always looking for something to prove that you are who you say you are. They want to look for something that you've done, something that you've built. They want to look for you to believe what you're saying in some kind of a physical manifestation. <clears throat> they want to see your performance. They want to see how well you do. And whatever it is you're doing. Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness that is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses. Remember, he's speaking to Jews. He's speaking to Jewish people that think Moses walked on water. 
He did indeed. As great as a man he was, the patriarch, he didn't walk on water. Moses, who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. The bread that came from heaven is he who has come from heaven to give you the bread of life of the world. Jesus is the bread. Amen? No. Yeah. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Sometimes I like to say, you don't deserve the bread. You turned your back on him. You crucified him. You sent him to the cross. You're the one that denied him. Jesus said to them, I am. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. The man in the wilderness was nothing compared to who I am. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, capital M, he who comes to me will not hunger, or he who believes in me will never thirst. Is he talking about the physical or the spirit? We relate back to the manna in the wilderness and we say physical. Jesus is talking about spiritual. Remember that the woman of the well? You drink this water and you'll never thirst again? Her question, well, you don't even have a dipper to dip the water out with. And Jesus said, you don't get it. I am the water of life. I am the water of life. You will never thirst, but I said to you that you have seen me. You know what blows me away? These people actually seen him do stuff. They actually seen him do stuff. And he says, you've seen me do stuff. You've seen me do things. You've seen me perform miracles. But I say to you that you have seen me and do not believe. Before that, they're asking for signs of proof. Show us. Give us an example. And Jesus says, hey, I've showed you, but you still don't believe. Now, in our day, we can walk around saying, well, where's the, where's the signs and wonders now? Let me tell you something, folks. You are a sign and a wonder. Anybody who can give their life over to the Lamb of God without personally recognizing Him and walk by faith that He has accomplished what He said He's going to accomplish and He dwells in you. What more proof do you need? All that the Father gives All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. Jesus is saying that everyone that walks the face of this earth, God will give them to Jesus, but the problem is, are they listening? Are they accepting? Or are they still looking for signs and wonders and performances? You know, you might not understand this, or maybe you do, but to me, the greatest humility in worship is having worship on the screen and still get the same effect as when our worship teams are up here. And I'm so glad, you might not understand this, but I'm so glad that God gave us an opportunity to have Marlene do that for us in between our worship teams. Pastor, that, you know what? That's not kind of boring. Really? Oh, Lord. Worship 
is worship. Worship is worship. If it's done like worship should be done to glorify Him, it doesn't matter what avenue it goes down. He will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will. Now think of that for a minute. Jesus could have came down and you know God, I'm going to, Father, I'm going to do what I want to do on earth because you sent me here and, and uh, I'm going to do it. How much humility does it take for God to leave divinity, get into a body, and say, I'm going to do it your way, Father, not mine. You know why that's hard for us to understand today? Because we're surrounded by things and people that do it their way. If people would just go to services and say, God, you do what you want to do. I'm just here to enjoy it. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, because it's about you and only you. And whatever Holy Spirit does in that surface or service, yes and amen, come Lord Jesus, come. You're probably not going to like this, but there's no order in worship here. Does that make any sense? Five minutes here, five minutes there. Okay, you've got to be done by 11.02, so this is not. Worship service is for God. And whatever avenue it shows up in, Whatever area it shows up in, whatever timeline it holds is for God. If it ain't for God, then we're going to stop doing it. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing. But raise it up on the last day, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone, anyone, all walks of life, who beholds the Son, of the Son and believes in Him, will have eternal life, and I myself will raise Him up on the last day. How many of you know sin can't get into heaven? Right? If you're a murderer, you ain't going. Unless you confess. And ask for forgiveness. Think of David. What's worse than that? Think of his son Solomon. Look what he ended up doing before he finally repented. Worship the idol of Olek. Sent babies through the, the worship of Moloch after they lit the thing on fire. Solomon did that. But he repented, didn't he? So we have we have a promise. No matter what lifestyle we have lived, past tense. I'm right with you, brother. Amen. What lifestyle we have lived, past tense, if we bring it to Jesus and leave it on the cross, he says, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean if I lay it at your foot and lay it at your feet, you've forgiven me? You've told me to go and sin no more? What's he saying? If I brought you out of one thing, don't get back into it. Amen. If I delivered you from something, don't allow yourself to get back into it. Example. If you were an alcoholic and God brought you alcohol, out of alcoholism, what business have you got going to a bar Oh, I'm going to share the word in the bar. Really? Leave that up to someone who's never been in the failing or the alcohol that they were involved in. Leave it to someone that doesn't have to look at the 
whiskey bottle boy, I remember that. Woo! Right? Or if you're involved in any other sin that God has, has spoken of in the Bible, go and sin no more. I brought you out of that. You're not that person no more. Unless you want to. And then you know what Jesus seems to do? I'll be right here when you're ready. You've heard my story many times about my vision, about walking through a canyon. Looking around the canyon and wondering, where you are, God? Where are you at, Jesus? I'm walking through this valley. What's going on? How can you left me? And then looking up and seeing with outstretched arms. And hearing this, I've never left you. I've never forsaken. You have put me behind you. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll give my life over to Jesus later. Might not be a later. Might not be a later. And we can go on and on about stuff that God delivered you from that you need to be careful to get back into it. Another example. If you was heading into pornography magazines, would you go to 7-Eleven and walk down the magazine aisle? No. Because on the magazine aisle, most of these places have these magazines that you can peer at, right? What business have you going there? You've been delivered. This is the will of my Father that everyone who beholds the Son of and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise up on the last day. Raise him up on the last day. Therefore, the Jews were groaning about him. Grumbling about him, my translation says. Because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. I am the bread of life. They were saying, Is it not this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Where my, where fa whose father and mother we know, how does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? You remember the Bible when Jesus was talking about people not being accepted in their own hometown. What did Jesus say to do? And go on. And go on to where you can be accepted. Because remember this, folks, just like this explanation here. They knew him from a young boy. So they couldn't accept who he is now. But as you read through scriptures, every one of these places that was hit by Jesus, Paul or Peter ended up showing up. And 5,000 one time, 3,000 another time. The word will go forth and will do what it's meant to do. It cannot come back to God void. It has to accomplish what it's been sent to do. Jesus is the word. Amen? Jesus answered and said to them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. My question is this. How can they be drawn if they never know the truth? How can they be drawn by the Holy Spirit if the word isn't planted somewhere? Amen? We've had people walk by this building on Wednesday nights and come in and end up changing their life. Why? I was brought in. Jesus drew me in. The Holy Spirit drew me in. Somewhere along their life, a word was planted. No one comes to the Father who comes to the, unless the Father who 
will sit and he draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Everyone who has heard and learned eventually will come to me. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord. Isn't that what it says? Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the men in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Spiritual food. I am the living bread. My brother owns a bakery in Chico. He was telling me one time about I think it's sourdough that still has things alive in it. Can you imagine? Jesus is the bread of life. And if you think about the sourdough process for a minute, that thing's going to get cooked. But it brings life to you when it's done, doesn't it? Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. I am going to go to a cross. I am going to go to a whipping post and get my body bruised, battered, and ripped apart for you. And we all know that he could have called myriads of angels to come and set him free. But I can almost see Jesus going, it's okay, guys. It's okay. It's going to be all right. The Jews then began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. Basically talking about communion. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. I don't know about you, but I want to abide in him. And he gives us opportunities every day to abide in him. And I in him. Do you, whoever eats my and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as a father's ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. How many of you have ever been in a confrontation with someone that tries to say the word isn't the word, and it's outdated, it's not, it's not for today, and, and they make a big deal out of this, and a big deal out of that, and, and you you call yourselves Christians, you're out of your mind. And how many of you been there? Oh yeah. But if you stick to the word, if you stick to the promises that are yesterday, man, in you, and the faith that builds up when you come through confrontation, the Bible says, take joy in all. Of the tribulations that you go through because it produces an endurance in you that allows you to continue on and to continue on and continue on. And when you say, God, I'm weak, I can't go no more, Jesus says, I'm with you. Holy Spirit will give you the power, and we're going to go forward. Amen. I 
I'm so glad that when Jesus promised, any promise he ever promised has come to pass except for the prophetic promise, right? The ones that are still in the future. But what's really mind-blowing to me, if it wasn't for faith, how do we even believe that he dwells in us? It takes faith to believe that, doesn't it? But the world will try to convince you that faith doesn't exist no more. You don't need faith to accomplish anything God has. Yeah, you do. You need faith to believe that God is alive. You need faith to believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. You have faith to believe when Jesus says, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a Holy Spirit to reveal the mysteries of my word to you. Let me tell you something, folks. We cannot understand this word without the Holy Spirit dwelling in. And you know this for a fact, because I know you've read stuff. Wow, where did that come from? I've read that five million times. Where did that come from? The Holy Spirit took that opportunity. To go, Whoop! Here it is. Whoa! If you look at the scripture that we just read, there's some 33 times and 35 times where you hear the word I and me. I and me. Not you. I and me. You can't do nothing without I or me. You can't even walk a, a, a righteous life without an I or me. Amen. And I don't mean me. I mean him. Amen. You do that. But sometimes we want to do something else or go another way because it's easier. Let me tell you something, folks. When you search the truth, it's difficult. Why? It's because there's so many lies out there. There's so much dispute out there. So to seek the truth is almost like, well, I've got to have faith that the truth is even the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth and the life. What, what, what was the what was Pilate's response? What is truth? You'll never understand this, sir. But I am truth. I am truth, and that we can take to the Holy Spirit of faith. Amen. So the next time the enemy tries to bring a a disparity upon you, and he will. Amen? But you are bigger and stronger than anything the enemy can throw at you. We declared this morning, like we did last week in our prayer room, north, south, east, and west are going to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why? And because we put the devil on notice. We release. The, 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 the warfare that will bring down the strongholds of all those that are up here that are under bodies for whatever reason. They, that bodies have been broken. All they have to do is recognize it. I'm not that way no more. Help me. Or I don't want to be that way no more. As believers, we need to have a big sign on our doors or trees or like Paul or whatever, and say this, your freedom begins here. Freedom from what? Sin, death, and the grave. Right? What's our sign say? Healing begins here. Not necessarily here, but here. Amen? The times that we live in they're trying to bring us to a place. And you know what? It's prophesied. It's not because where we're at today. It's prophesied. There will be a time when you will be hated. There will be a time when the word don't matter no more. There will be a time when they try to pass legislation that you can't read your Bible no more. It's coming. Isn't that what the Bible says? Isn't that what the end time results are? But again, greater is 
as he was in us, than he was in the world. We need to stand up and do what God tells us to do. Acts chapter 5. You don't have to turn there. Acts chapter 5, verse 27. When they had brought them, they stood them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name, and yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than man. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the bread of life. Don't let them tell you that he's not. I don't know about you, but I'm a little holy anger. Because God's people have the power and the availability to release warring angels upon spirits that are trying to bring things down. And we are bigger than that in Jesus' name. When you drive around this town on your way home or whatever, and God prompts you, pray. Because Spirit's revealing something to you. Some of you have been here long enough to know that, well, that house is full of that. Pray against that. Well, that store's got that. Pray against that. Jesus says you have power over demonic forces. You have power to heal the sick and raise the dead. Well, that's a tough one, Pastor. Raise the dead? You got it? You know what? Isn't that what he says? Sometimes death can be simple as spiritual blindness. Sometimes death can be the, the road someone's traveling. Wouldn't that be the same as bringing something from a place of prostitution or whatever? You're bringing them from life or from death to life? You just raised someone from the dead, didn't you? But this is stop there. You've got the ability, the power in you, to raise someone laying on the floor up. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. Well, Smith would have done it one time. Had a young man or young woman, I'm getting out what young man, I believe, dead. He walked up to him, grabbed him by the shirt, by the shirt collar, came up against the wall, said, Come alive in Jesus' name. He opened up his eyes out of that wall. I'm not sure we need to slam people against the wall, but it works, doesn't it? Seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. As you seek his kingdom first, you are recognized that Jesus is life, Jesus is bread, Jesus is everything that we need, but it won't appear to you unless you're seeking it out. You know, you always have a dream of doing something. Let's say you've always wanted to. Play golf, which that's kind of been my dream. So let's just say you've had a dream of playing golf or whatever. And all you do all day is sit in your easy chair dreaming about playing golf. Oh, I sure like to go play some golf. Man, that'd be fun. You'll never get there, will you? But when the Holy Spirit prompts you to do something, get up and do it. If it means standing in your front yard and praying for your neighbors, do it. And if they call you on the phone, then what's all that in my heart? I'm praying for you, man. I got you in my sights. Amen. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 
Amen? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I am who all the Father calls to me will come to me. All those who believe in me will have everlasting life. All those who come to me, I am their Savior. I am their Redeemer. I will set them free from sin, death, and the grave. I will set them free from a lifestyle that's going to do nothing but harm them, nothing that bring them to a pit that they'll never get out of, because I am who I am. Amen? Revelation 22, 20 says this, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen? Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we receive what the Holy Spirit has given us today, Lord. Help us to be more obedient every day of our life. Every breath we take, help us to be more obedient to you. And to walk as you've asked us to walk. And lean not on our own understanding, but always 